Welcome to the Digital Marketing News. I'm Tiffany Allen. And with your first story this week, I am Joshua Knight. My first story this week is, welcome back, Tiffany. Hey, thanks. Thanks for, uh, to Annie Lumen for filling in last week, and thanks to you for being on the secret mission that we totally did not tell anyone about. Very secret. I'm sure no one knows. Mm -hmm. uh, the ducks that are okay, though? Everything's fine. Okay. That's all we can say <laughs> about that. But if we wanted to say a whole lot more about it, say we wanted to put up an ad on LinkedIn, right. that happens to be a client, I suppose we should say, we could be a little more effective in our ads now because LinkedIn just updated their campaign manager. Oh. Yes, this is cool. So this, they have a whole new look. It's a little bit sleeker, a little bit easier to get at things, uh, lots of rectangles with borders around them that make it very easy to see what you're doing. But in addition, there are a couple of new features. One of them is the ability to run brand awareness campaigns. Sweet. These are focused on what they say will help to increase share of voice. And these campaigns are charged uh, CPM mm -hmm. rather than uh, any kind of click through. So it's really just about getting yourself out there. It makes a lot of sense. Marketers know what that means. The other one is enhanced website conversion. So if you've been enjoying website conversion, well, they're going to enhance it. Even better. Yeah. They're going to give you tighter integration with their conversion tracking tools. They're going to let you optimize the campaign for actions on the website, adding a few more categories like purchases, downloads, even event registrations on your website. They have also, though, in addition to this, added optimized click pricing, oh, okay. which is kind of handy for marketers. So you only are getting charged for the actions that have value to you. Mm -hmm. Loving it. So only charged for clicks that take users to a landing page if you're running an external campaign like that. But if you're running a social campaign, then you get charged for all engagements like your likes and your comments and your shares. Sure. So all this exciting for marketers to come and jump in on. If you're B2B, you got to be on LinkedIn. That's just how it is. It is how it is. You know, I was reading the articles in this week's news post. I don't believe you. Yeah, and I found one I liked. What? I know. Oh. So there's a new study from Impact and Forrester about how marketing partnerships affect marketers. Hmm. Okay. How is our marketing partnership? No, go ahead. We're, we'll talk about it later. Um, so 77% of companies see partnership development as central to their 2019 marketing strategy. And companies with a mature partnership program grow company revenue nearly twice as fast as other companies. Oh my gosh. Right. So, yeah. And they're five times more likely to exceed stock price and bottom line profitability with these partnerships. So, wh what partnerships are we talking about? Here? Well, Josh, partnerships <laughs> include anything from strategic partners, B2B partners, affiliates, influencers, mm. Mm, app to app integrations, and more. Do you suppose that an agency partnership? would help with that? I, I can't help but think yes. Yeah. If it doesn't, we're doing something terribly, terribly wrong. Fair enough. <laughs> but no, yes, partnerships are great. Yeah. Uh, as a Gen Xer, though, of course, I'm not really a partnership kind of guy. It's because everyone forgets about you. I know. We're the middle child. we got the baby boomers on the one hand. They're real loud. we got mm. the millennials on the other hand. They're great. What? That's right. Great. And we love them unconditionally. Of course. But it's always nice to hear something about Gen X in marketing media because we actually are a demographic. There's a few of us out there. Yeah. But eMarketer and BizRate Insights oh, did a poll on. in April of 2019 of uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, probably seven million billion people. That's a lot of people. That's a rough estimate. It's more than there are people. Right. But across, <laughs> they went across. Uh, generational lines. Right. So the uh, I want to focus on the Gen Xers though. So that this is interesting. So these are the folks 35 to 54 years old. I'm square in the middle of that. Uh, but they are slightly less likely than millennials to be doing their shopping and doing their research on these mobile sites and mobile apps. Hmm. So that means they're less likely to use a mobile wallet app like your Apple Pays and your Google Pays and all those things. We are less likely to use a mobile retail app of any kind. Uh, much less likely, so those were just three or four percentage points less likely, but up in the 10 to 12 percent less likely to use apps like Uber, Lyft, and your uh, Airbnbs, those huh. kind of things. So not really participating in the shared economy. Uh, we are more likely to use grocery apps, though, like Fresh Direct, because, you know, we, we got kids, we ain't got time to go to the grocery store. I'm hungry. We're certainly not going to take an Uber there. We <laughs> trust it. But of particular interest to marketers, I thought, though, because that behavior stuff is interesting. But mm -hmm. for marketers, Gen Xers are less likely to keep up with brands via social media or via their actual apps for mm. the brands. So they are more likely to use some of these things that marketers might be writing off as outdated, such as 
uh, visiting the brand website. Oh. Who goes to websites anymore? Apparently uh -huh. we do. Subscribing to email. Of course. Email marketing. And direct mail. Yes. Stuff that comes to an actual physical mailbox. <laughs> so, oh, oh boy. if we are in your target audience, say you're selling canes, perhaps oh, yes. arthritis medicine, um, 80s nostalgia, if you're selling any of those things, uh, keep in mind those slightly older kinds of tactics. Uh, because, also we are crotchety, 56% uh, of us say there are too many ads on their social sites, and only 11% said they follow brands on social. So. Like with any generation, go where your audience is. Mm -hmm. If we're your audience, you may be looking at some old school tactics. That's fair. Speaking of stuff that's kind of old school, but is also new again. All right, everything old is new again. Tell me. Yeah, so Twitter is making some oh, tweaks to their Twitter. list feature. You remember yeah. Twitter? Oh, Aww. old bird guys. That's right. Mm -hmm. So users on Twitter can now choose which lists appear under their list tabs, and they can also pin lists of their choice. Hmm. So this functions in a couple of ways, obviously. If you're building a list, for example, for influencer marketing, you might want to engage with those folks on your list. Uh, but also helps you kind of customize your timeline. So if you have a variety of interests like I do, and I'm sure you do. You contain multitudes, it's true. Yeah, it's true. You can just kind of go in by interest and personalize your timeline. So that's great. We love it. Um, will this have any effect on influencer marketing, marketing in general, people at all? We don't know. We'll find out together. But it is something kind of neat you might want to check out. Stay tuned. Yeah. But please don't make Twitter the only channel that you engage customers on. You know why? No, don't. Because, <laughs> well, it's a bad idea, but <laughs> we actually have some data on that. Uh, Morrow Post, mm. uh, organization with a marketing solution, they put out their inaugural industry survey, so the very first one. Uh, they have told us somewhat unscientifically that they looked at hundreds oh. of, uh, not any particular hundred, but you know, somewhere between two and nine hundred. <laughs> Senior marketing professionals. Um, we should note these are consumer-facing small businesses. So if you're B2B, if you're an enterprise, your results may vary a little bit. But they found, I'm sure we would all agree, that 97% said customer expectations are increasing. Yep. I would say so. Mm -hmm. But only 4% of them said that they, as a company, have a true single customer view mm -hmm. that goes across channels. So that's talking about customer experience, all the social media channels, mail, uh, direct mail, homing pigeons, all of those. Yeah. Nobody's bringing them all together, very few. And only 37% say that they can effectively create an omnichannel experience. Wow. So only about a third. So we have a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, and the number one challenge for these folks is a lack of knowledge and training when it comes yes. to this topic. Mm -hmm. So time for implementation of omnichannel strategy can be three months or more, which I mean, it makes sense. It's a lot of undertaking to get all that data cleaned up, make sure everything makes sense, verify it, and then of course, let it go. Yeah. Um, but poor non-existent omni-channel experiences can result in a 10% decrease in revenue, Oof. which is a lot of money probably. So mm. you want to make sure that you're not losing any money by not doing this. The investment's absolutely worth it. Marketers really need to embrace all of these kinds of data and tactics and you yeah, know, you gotta bring them make together. Them online. Not only just have the data, have it together, yes. be able to actionalize on it and get into providing those omni-channel experiences. Because that's is that is rapidly becoming just kind of a table stakes kind of thing. Should you don't wow that. somebody when you do it. They're just like, ah, oh, yes, that is as it should be. Yeah, just don't creep anyone out. Don't go too far. You know, what unless I mean? you're a Gen X, and they're just like, get off my social media. Lawn. My Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all the news we have for you this week. There's more, of course, if you want to follow us on Twitter at Top Rank or follow me at Tiffany underscore Allen. Yep, you can find me on Twitter at Night Rights. That's N I T E W R I T E S. And please do subscribe to this channel here on YouTube for all of our cool stuff. And check out the Top Rank blog for more news. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.